Welcome everybody to Bedbug TV. I'm your host, Jeff White. And in today's episode, I wanted to talk to you guys about a monitor you might have read recently about online that talks about using dry ice in a cooler and, yes, a dog bowl to create a trap that monitors for bed bugs. And the article basically read that anybody can go out and, you know, set this monitor up and use it in their house. And that is, in fact, true. It is something that people could go out, get some dry ice, get the ingredients that it takes to create the monitor, and set it in their own home. But the article kind of came off that, you know, anybody can do this by just going out and buying the few things, and away they go. And although that is true, there are some things that you need to be aware of in order to do this properly. Because there are some things about the dog bowl that you have to pick the right one, and some other things that you need to be aware of. So we're going to go into that in a second. I'm going to talk a little bit about that article, what it said, and how to actually create this monitor yourself. Before I get into it, though, I wanted to make a couple quick statements. This monitor is not really intended to be used by pest control companies and pest control operators. This monitor does utilize dry ice in it, and dry ice is actually compressed or condensed carbon dioxide. And when that happens, what they do is they actually take the dry ice and they put it in this cooler. And dry ice is extremely cold on the surface. It can actually be in excess of negative 110 degrees Fahrenheit. And if that dry ice were to touch your skin, or God forbid somebody should ingest it, it could be dangerous. And so when you go and set it in somebody's house as a pest control company, you know, there's no way that you can secure this cooler. Anybody could go in, unscrew the top, and access that dry ice. And so there could be a lot of liability associated with this monitor. And it's not really intended to be used by pest control companies. Pest control companies should really be looking at using the commercially manufactured devices, such as the CDC 3000 and the Nightwatch monitor. So, again, pest control companies, you know, be careful of liability associated with this. The commercially manufactured monitors are really a better option. Now, also, remember that anytime you set any one of these monitors, a zero trap catch does not necessarily mean there aren't bed bugs in your home. Not all bed bugs are attracted to these types of monitors. This monitor attracts hungry bed bugs. What if there aren't any hungry bed bugs in your home when you set this monitor? You may not catch anything. And I don't want people to misinterpret the results. They go to look at this the next day. They say, oh, I don't see any bugs. I must not have bed bugs. That's not necessarily what it means. It gives you an indication that there might not be bed bugs there. But just remember, this does not attract every bed bug in a population. So a zero trap catch does not mean you don't have bed bugs. Okay, so let's jump into the monitor itself real quick. I'll give you a brief overview of the article, and then I'll talk about how to actually do this yourself. Alrighty, so the article basically read that researchers from Rutgers University created a monitor that, you know, is very effective and even more effective than some of the commercially available devices and is easy to set and anybody can do it. And as I said before, that is true. It is relatively easy to set. But there are some things they brush over in the article that some people may not be aware of. And you need to be because if you don't have the right pieces, you may not be able to do this properly. So... Here we have in front of us the first, you know, thing that you're going to need to consider possibly getting, and that is, yes, a dog bowl. And so what we have here is we have a dog bowl that, you know, you could probably buy at your local, you know, Walmart or whatever the case may be, local convenience store. And you can see it's a typical plastic dog bowl. But what you're going to do when you set this monitor is you're going to flip this bowl over and you're going to put it down on the ground just like that. And what it's going to do is it's going to mimic a device we talk about on the show all the time, a climb-up device, what we have here. Now, what a climb-up device is, is you put the leg of the bed in the center well, and as bugs come to it, they fall in this outer well and they get trapped. And as you can see, this dog bowl is very similar to that design. You have a platform here that you're going to put your cooler on top of, but you have a well here that when the bugs call up the side, they'll fall in and get stuck. And that's what you need to look for when you're buying the dog bowl. And that's one of those things that, you know, when you read the article, you say, oh, I can just go out and buy a dog bowl, we'll be good to go. Not necessarily the case. You have to have the right design in that dog bowl in order to use it properly. Also, you can see here that we have painter's tape on the outside of the dog bowl. The outside of these dog bowls are usually very smooth, and bed bugs may not be able to climb up them. And so what we did is we wrapped the outside of this in painter's tape. You could also use masking tape. I've even rough the sides of these up with sandpaper to make them coarse. Nonetheless, you have to make it so that the bugs can walk up and down it. And so there's another thing that you may not be aware of from reading the article. The third thing is that you're going to need to use talc powder, which is what I have here, 
to dust the inside of this dog bowl to make it slippery so the bugs really definitely shouldn't be able to get out. And so what you have here is you have your cotton ball, you dust the inside of this well, and what that's going to do is it's going to make it slippery enough so that the bugs can't escape. And so those are the three things you need to take into consideration when it comes to the dog bowl and, and the right one to choose and how to prep it. And so what we have here now is our dog bowl. And it's ready to go. So you're going to have to go out and find dry ice. You're going to need to make some calls, figure out in the area what places sell dry ice. And again, you're going to be very careful when you're handling it. Now, I'm not going to speak to the proper handling of dry ice, but you do need to get as much information as possible in regards to how to properly handle dry ice. You're going to take your cooler or your thermos or your styrofoam cup, whatever you're going to put it in, unscrew the lid, put the dry ice in, screw it back up. You might want to loosen the top just a little bit to let the carbon dioxide come out. And then you're going to take it and you're going to put it on this platform that the dog bowl is on, that the dog bowl creates, I should say. And now the bugs are going to come to this monitor, walk up the sides, and fall in the well. And so there you go. That's basically your design. Another thing you can consider doing is that this cooler is going to be very cold. And in the warmer months especially, a lot of condensation is going to build up on the cooler. And that condensation will then run into the wells of the dog bowl. And then that will get the talc powder you put in there all wet and will make the talc powder ineffective for making the surface slippery. So one thing you can do is you can just take a simple, you know, little towel in your home, fold it up, and put it underneath that cooler so that way the cooler has something to absorb that or the trap has something to absorb that condensation. The one thing you want to be careful of is if you do go this route of putting a towel or something to catch the, the water that is created underneath the cooler, that the towel doesn't touch the outside of the dog bowl. So what would happen then is a bug would walk up the side of this and then walk right onto that towel right to the cooler. And then you have bugs on this, ta this cooler and it's very difficult to see. So you want to make sure that when you do the towel, it doesn't touch any of the sides of the dog bowl. It's just underneath the cooler. Okay, so basically that's the design. And this cooler is going to keep that dry ice probably good overnight where it's releasing the carbon dioxide and bugs are going to come to this. And yes, it is a relatively easy design. But those couple things that I talked about you need to be aware of in order to do this properly. I'd hate to see somebody create this and then it doesn't work and they don't catch any bugs. And they think they didn't catch any bugs because the, bug, the trap was working and they don't have any bugs in their home when really the bugs couldn't get in the unit because it wasn't the right dog bowl or whatever the case may be. Now, another thing that you can consider is that if you have climb-up devices in your house because they're on your bed or you're interested in purchasing them to begin with, you can actually use these as the same design as the dog bowl because it's the same type of concept. And if you had, say, a styrofoam cup like this, or anything that would fit in this center well of the climb-up device. You can take this, fill it with dry ice, and then put it in the center well of the climb-up device. And the climb-up device is going to serve the same purpose. It's going to collect bugs as they come to that dry ice source. So this is another design that you could consider that would be even more cost-effective than this design. And you can go and set this in your home, and away you go. Alrighty, everybody. So that's really a brief overview of the bed bug dry ice trap, and another option that you have in order for setting it. Just please remember the few things that I mentioned. This trap is not really designed for pest control companies, and they should really consider using the commercially available devices. Also, a zero trap catch doesn't necessarily mean that you have bed bugs, don't have bed bugs, excuse me. A zero trap catch does not necessarily mean you don't have bed bugs. And then the dog bowl design is critical in setting this trap and please be careful when you're handling dry ice make sure you know how to handle it properly so that way nobody injures himself when setting this trap. Alrighty, if you have any questions about this monitor please email me at jeff.white at bedbugcentral.com and I'd be more than happy to answer any questions and yes I hope to see everybody